Senior so Advocate, for a moment, let me ask uh, the spokesperson of the Senate, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Media and Publicity. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Abdullahi. Uh, this is the second uh, public statement by two former heads of state uh, giving a thumbs down for your party and for the APC-led government. Are you disappointed by the performance of your party? Well, uh, thank you very much for having me, Shion. Uh, first, let me say that I'm not disappointed in the performance of my party. Uh, but at the same time, I will not want to go into that discourse because people are entitled to their opinions, including myself. And as far as I'm concerned, my take is right now as a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the 8th Senate, we have a duty, and I think we are concentrating on that duty. So for me, I will not want to start dragging myself into this discourse. The conversation we hoped that we were going to have before this news broke, uh, totally different about some issues relating to the Senate. But I would like to get your take on the thought of the former head of state, Ibrahim Babangida, that Nigeria has not gotten its leadership compass right. And in 2019, the candidate or the, the president, Muhammadu Buhari, should not seek re-election. Do you, what, what exactly is your take on that? So I think uh, even in his statement, uh, he clearly stated that, you know, he cannot deny the sitting president his right. So I think to me, these things are very clear. And uh, whatever it is, 2019 is going to come, and 2019 is going to pass by the grace of God. Uh, what is important as far as I'm concerned is for us to all, in whatever capacity we find ourselves, even as private citizens and individuals, we should put Nigeria first. And I think if we do that at all times, then we'll begin to get whatever description you want to call, whether compass or you know, whatever, I think we'll get it right. But the truth of the matter is that we all have a collective responsibility as individuals and as citizens of this country, in whatever capacity we find ourselves, whether as legislators, whether as executive, whether as practicing lawyers or, you know, engineers or whatever capacity you find yourself. Everybody has one responsibility or the other, you know, towards this country. And I think our collective failure is perhaps what put us where we are. And so I wouldn't want to sit on any high ground and begin to point fingers at any other person. Uh, I would rather want to look at myself and to do what I believe is right in my contribution to this country. Senator... The former head of state says, and I quote, the unchecked activities of the headsmen have continued to raise doubt on the capacity of this government to handle with dispatch security concerns that continue to threaten our dear nation. One major issue he raised about the competency of your government. Are you, what, what exactly is your take on the handling of the headsmen uh, attacks in uh, some parts of the country? Well, I think uh, the president has made uh, some copious, you know, explanation on what he has done. And uh, for me, I'm not, speak, I'm not holding brief for the executive. Uh, rather, I want to look at what we have done as uh, Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, you will recall we have a committee that we have asked to look at the total infrastructure, the security infrastructure of this country. And uh, this is arising from the fact that we have received several you know, complaints from our members uh, coming from their constituencies. And arising from that, this committee has set out to work, and uh, indeed, we will have actually had the security summit where we'll look at all of these issues. But because of the burial of the late, you know, vice president, and the fact that we want our colleagues from the Southeast to be fully involved, we, you know, postpone this to another date. But suffice it to say that as far as we are concerned, we all agree there is definitely a security challenge. And what is important is, for us, is not for us to push the blame to anybody, but to get up and do the needful by looking at all the issues ancillary or directly you know, related to the insecurity so that we can provide solutions. And I think by the time we are done with 
this assignment, I'm very much convinced that we will definitely get something that will move this country forward with respect to our security infrastructure. Up next on the program, a court has upheld a Senate power to confirm or reject, but what is Mago's fate? We switch gear after this break, everyone. Join us again. During the past week, a federal high court in Abuja upheld the powers of the Nigerian Senate to confirm or reject the statutory nomination of a candidate for the position of chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC. The Senate obviously is happy with his judgment, but what comes after this? I have the Senate spokesperson, Senator Sabi Abdullah in Abuja, Syria, and here is a senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, Chief Robert Clark. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time on the program. If, if I may quickly come to you um, on this particular judgment. Uh, it's affirming the powers of the Senate, that judgment from the past week, uh, that it has a right to confirm. There's been uh, uh, some sort of disagreement between the executive and the legislature, which perhaps the grounds on which the SEC chairman is still in the acting capacity. What do you make of that judgment? Let us do it clear. I don't think any lawyer should have gone to court to ask the court to determine whether the Senate has the power to reject or to appoint. It is so clear in the Constitution. There was no need to go to court because the answer is so clear. The answer will be yes. So the lawyer who went to court to pose a question to the court whether the Senate has the power to appoint or reject was playing to the gallery because it is clear. The answer will be clear. Now, the question is not whether the Senate could appoint or could not appoint. The Senate is that they have rejected on two occasions, and the executive is still keeping Magu as an, in an acting capacity. That is the issue. And the Senate is saying, please, bring somebody to us so that we can appoint a substantive chairman. But they, too, are over, you know, stretching their lock. S you mean the Senate? The Senate. Because Section 5 of the Constitution gives all executive powers to the president to appoint and not to appoint. If the president feels he could perform the duties without appointing anybody, nobody can query him. He has sent Magu to you once. You have returned him. He has sent him to you the second time. You have returned him. She cannot. He says, OK, I will keep him in an acting capacity. But is that lawful? It's lawful. Because he controls all executive powers under Section 5. Let me give you an example. When um, Bush was president of America, he wanted to appoint Bolton as the rep Nigeria rep um, United States representative in the U uh, United Nations. The, 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 the uh, Congress refused it, that is the Senate. He sent him there, and all during his tenure, he was on an acting capacity because he was exercising his executive duties under the Constitution. So Magu being kept there by Buhari in an acting capacity, nobody can flow it. So, I mean, none of the institutions now, either the, neither the executive nor the, the legislature is at fault in this matter. Is anybody at wrong here? You see, as I said, Senate is overstretching its powers. In what sense? To be asking the presidency to bring somebody forward nomination. That is not their duty. They are trying to, you know, ask the, uh, uh, Buhari to do his executive duties under their own push. No. When he sends somebody, then under the Constitution, they assume the right to appoint or reject him. But if nobody is sent, then he does, they do nothing. 